Hello, hello everyone. So um, <clears throat> welcome to this year's email security talk at um, DEF CON. So uh, my name is Jens Müller. I'm a PhD student at the Jeffrey Network Data Security at the University of uh, Bochum in Germany. And uh, this is joint work with the University of Applied Sciences in Münster uh, on covert content attacks targeting PGP and ASMA-based encryption and digital signatures. Okay, so um, what happened in the world of email security last year? Email happened. Some of you may remember it. It was one of the most important attacks of last year. Uh, why was email so important? Because it was one of those attacks that come with a logo. Okay? And besides some clickbaiting headlines we've seen in the press, actually, email was a real world crypto issue targeting the cipher modes of operation in both PGP and as MIME, with a lot of things not fixed until today. So when we did e-fail last year, we also stumbled across some minor bugs in, in email clients. So we thought it would be minor bugs, but then we looked deeper and uh, then we found out, whoa, that's actually totally RFC standard uh, behavior of email. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So we are not going to do any mass, not, no crypto, but super practical uh, and super simple attacks against encryption and digital signatures in the context of email. Okay, so here's an outline of the talk. First, I'm going to give you a short introduction on uh, email and PGP and ASMIME. Um, then I'm going to come to the attacks on encryption and digital signatures and an evaluation of those attacks on 24 widely used email clients. Uh, and finally, I'm go going to show some count images so developers of email clients can protect um, their customers from those attacks. Okay, let's start with technology's promise. So, in the 90s, we've heard um, representatives of the cyber movement, cyberpunk movement, claiming like strong crypto is mathematically unbreakable. Use it, encryption for the masses. And they were right, of course, yes, we should use it. Um, and then we have heard other actors like government, people, they didn't believe in mass encryption at that time, but they uh, like to think about, well, in the year 2000, everybody will use like digital signatures to sign the business contracts and things like that, which also didn't really happen. But, um, well, it's based on the same idea that they're mathematically hard to solve uh, problems, okay? Um, so, now let me ask the what if question. What if those claims could be bypassed with a single reply to a benign looking email? And that's what today's talk is going to be about. Okay, to fully understand, let me give you a brief history lesson on email. So in the beginning, there was ASCII text messages, okay? And it was good, okay? We had a great signal to noise ratio, no spam, basically. And until today, emails consist of like a header which contains uh, information about maybe sender, recipient, subject, and so on, and a body containing the actual message. And because email back in the time was transferred usually over unencrypted, insecure channels, um, people began to think about privacy, okay? So Phil Zimmerman came up with this great idea of traditional PGP, PGP inline back then. So, which basically leaves the header as it is, but encrypts the text message body using public key crypto. And it was good back at the time, okay? And then people came around and thought, well, we want to do more. We want not only to send text messages over email, we also want to send like binary data, binary files and so on. Therefore, multi-purpose internet mail extensions was born. So with MIME email, you can, for example, send an email that contains of multiple parts of multiple data formats, okay? Like, for example, you could have a mixed multi-part message uh, with multiple parts that are separated by some boundary, and in this example, we have two plain text, uh, two ASCII text messages, okay, resulting in a structure like this. But you could also, of course, for example, use uh, and create an HTML email with a PDF attachment, okay? So MIME, MIME is how modern email is used uh, today. Okay, and then um, based on the MIME standard, people came around with yet another 
um, standard for email end to end encryption which is SMIME. You probably have heard about it. Um, similar to PGP but more used in like corporate environments. So um, SMIME defines the content type of application PKSA 7 MIME and then encrypts and base64 encodes the body of the email which could by itself be a complete MIME structure. Okay so how do you um, encrypt your emails in uh, 2019. So we still have those two competing standards like PGP which is more used by journalists, activists, hackers, by us and SMIME which is more used in business environments or like by universities who can afford running a central certificate authority. And besides the, the trust model actually both standards use more or less the same crypto which is which has a lot of flaws and it's old crypto but it's not I'm not going to talk about crypto today because the attacks I'm going to present now are basically independent of the actual encryption scheme okay let it be PGP or SMIME or whatever at least um, um unless um, so they must be used in the context of email then we can probably uh, apply them. Okay, so let me come to the attacks on encryption. So our attacker model is super simple. The if trap or if has somehow captured ciphertext between two communication parties. It's quite a strong attacker model, obviously, but the only reason why you use end to end email encryption is that an insecure communication channel of course is presumed, right? So um what if now can do with the a captured ciphertext email is she can modify the outer structure of the email. We do not do any ciphertext modifications, any bit flipping today, but we modify the, the outer MIME structure, okay? And then she can resend that modified email to the victim, which can either be the original sender or the original recipient of the message, because emails are usually encrypted with the uh, uh, public key of both of them, so both of them should be able to decrypt the email later. Okay, both of them can be misused as a decryption oracle. Um, so here's an outline of the attack. The attacker Eve um, sends a benign looking uh, email message that is visible to Johnny. And then she um, appends some, um, something we call um, um, covert content like the hidden ciphertext part, okay, which Johnny cannot really see. But Johnny's email client can parse it. So for reasons we will see later, if Johnny replies to that uh, message, um, to that harmlessly looking message, he will leak the plain text to the attacker. Okay, how do we do that in practice? So assume this is um, uh, a captured SMIME email from Alice to Johnny. Now what could Eve possibly do with that email? So of course she can simply change the from address to her own address so replies go to her, okay? And then what she can do is she can use this ciphertext part and wrap it into her own specially crafted MIME structure. Okay, for example she can prepend some ASCII text resulting in a MIME tree like this. So um, an email client would then of course parse that message and see there's encrypted part and decrypted, okay? That's what email clients do. So this, uh, this message would be shown in Thunderbird like this. You have the attacker's part and the original ciphertext which got translated to the plain text which got decrypted by the email client, okay? You see what I'm pointing you to? What happens if we reply to that message, okay? If Johnny replies to that message, he will also leak the secret message, he will leak the plain text. Well, Johnny is not the brightest guy on planet Earth, but Johnny is not super dumb either. He sees that something fishy is going on. But all we need now is some way to hide the existence of the second part. So what we can simply do is some obfuscation like add a lot of new lines, um, and if Johnny's in a hurry, he may already reply to that message, okay? Uh, and thereby leak the, the cipher text if, does, if it doesn't scroll down. We could also hide it with some, some longer communication um, history or things like that. We could also use HTML and simply comment out the second part. So if Johnny replies to that email, he sees nothing but a benign looking message and thereby leaks the plain text. So 
if email clients do try to uh, counter those attacks and enforce a strong isolation between multiple mime parts, or we can simply break that isolation using content ideas which allow you to refer from one mime part to another part, which is even an RC standard. So supported by most email clients. Okay, you may say, well, that's HTML issues. But um, there are lots of other possibilities, like, for example, we could also define the second part as an attachment, use Unicode tricks, encoding tricks, and so on. So the takeaway here is that it's not an HTML issue, okay? The issue is MIME wrapping. Why is it possible to use the encrypted part in a completely different context? Um, and then it's only engineering um, to hide it, basically. Okay, so um, I hope I can give you a demo for that one. I need some help here. Can you sync the screens? Thank you. Okay, so um, in this example, we have um, a captured um, asthma message um, from the manager to Johnny, um, but it could also be PGP MIME or, or PGP inline or whatever. Now, Eve can, of course, modify the subject of that email and also change the from address. And what she does now is she wraps, simply wraps that encrypted part into her own MIME structure. In this example, we have some HTML message um, before the actual ciphertext part, and in this example, we use some iframe to basically hide the second part. Okay, um, so uh, let's send that email to Pujani. And what Johnny's email client, in this example, uh, Apple Mail, does is it will only, of course, display the first part because of that iframe. So it will only display something like, hello, Johnny, I'm interested in your research. Could, be, could you tell me blah, blah, blah. And because Johnny's a nice guy, he replies to that email, okay? He uses email as a communication medium. And in the reply to Eve, uh, you will not see anything visible, but if you look at the, if Eve looks at the source code, she will see that in the quoted uh, reply message, not only the visible part, but also the invisible part containing the uh, ciphertext was uh, quoted. Okay, so um, the takeaway here is that um, you cannot only um, leak one single ciphertext, okay? So the NSA could, for example, have captured hundreds of emails um, over years and then she wraps all of them into one specially crafted email, resends that email to the victim, and with one single reply, hundreds of plain text would be leaked. Okay, so um, we thought, can we adapt those attacks maybe to digital signatures? So the, um, the outline is pretty much the same. Again, we um, have some benign looking message, and in this case, what we want to do is we want to misuse the email client of Johnny not as a decryption oracle but as a signing oracle, okay? We want to obtain a validly signed uh, message that displays I hereby declare war. Okay, Johnny is the commander in chief in this example and we want to start false flag warfare. Okay, if Johnny replies to that message, he will sign, he will quote and sign therefore both parts. And for, for, with some tricks we will see uh, in a second, we can resend that signed message to a third party, like to some army general, who will then only see a displayed string, which is signed by Johnny and says, I hereby declare war. So hopefully the army commander, the general, will give some phone call to Johnny before actually starting that war, right? Okay, um, how can we do that in practice? Um, well, we can use HTML email and um, have two strings. Uh, a malicious one and um, a benign one, and we can wrap the malicious message into some diff class, and all we need now is some CSS conditional rules to, based on some conditions, hide the first text or the second text, okay? So for example, we can do this using the media CSS conditional rule. So based on the screen size, for example. So 
the certain text is hidden maybe on mobile devices but shown on desktop devices. Okay, so um, if this email is um, opened by Johnny in most email clients, so what will be shown is a benign looking message. Here's the reply. Johnny actually uh, uses this technology. He believes in PGP and SMAM, therefore, he signs all his outgoing messages, okay? Because he does not want to be impersonated. But the signed message um, on a desktop device with another a screen size would, of course, um, have a completely different string being displayed, okay? Okay, so now we can target like the device type, okay? Uh, like, like, you know, mobile, desktop, um, yeah, maybe that's not too interesting. But we can also target um, each and every email client. So using the support uh, conditional rule in CSS, we could be um, fingerprinted um, all major email clients um, and show, can show a certain string only on certain email clients. Um, and also we can go down further and target certain user accounts only, which is what I'm hopefully going to show you um, now. Okay, so um, in this example we have um, only two parties like um, Eve directly impersonates the manager, so it's an email from the manager to Johnny. Eve directly spoofs the, the um, from address um, to make things a bit easier in this example. And what you can see here is some CSS code based on the mods document URL prefix. If it starts with IMAP colon double slash manager at something, a certain text is shown, okay? So let's send that message from the manager to poor Johnny. So as you can see there's uh, just some harmlessly looking message um, and well uh, what's up Johnny from the manager, well whatever, Johnny replies yeah I'm fine blah blah and as said Johnny believes in PGP and asthma and he, he uses actually this technology, he always signs his outgoing messages, okay? And now if this message is received by the manager a completely different string is shown like, like I hereby quit my job but it's validly signed by Johnny. Okay. That's HTML tricks. For signatures, that's HTML tricks. But anyway, um, if we define digital signatures as mathematically unbreakable and unfortunate, such simple, stupid tricks shouldn't be working, right? Okay. So now, now let me come to an evaluation of those attacks. So um, we tested uh, 24 widely used uh, email clients, basically every client that supports either PGP or SMIME or both. And regarding being misused as a decryption oracle, um, uh, a lot of email clients including uh, Thunderbird and, and Apple Mail for example are vulnerable and all Linux based email clients. And uh, my guess here is actually that email clients where the um, the developers actually read the RFCs and tried to implement a standard compatible email client, they are more, more vulnerable than those who maybe just had a quick hack for a PGP plugin. And uh, regarding signatures, it's kind of even worse. I mean, uh, basically every email client that supports HTML uh, can be at least tricked to uh, display a certain uh, message only in this client and things like that. It's hard to counter against. Also, the signature issues are not fixed until today. Okay, so now let, let me come to some, uh, some countermeasures. Well, you may say, let's accept ASCII text only. Let's finally get rid of HTML email. I'm totally on your side. <laughs> let's start yet another ASCII ribbon campaign. But it will not solve the de decryption is issues, okay? Because it's, um, the problem is mime wrapping, okay? We could also use some Unicode tricks and other tricks to hide the second part. It will not, unfortunately, solve the decryption oracle tricks. Um, we could say, what about do not decrypt unless the email is validly signed? Doesn't work either in the context of email um, because attackers can simply strip the signatures and resign on their own, on their own identity. So what a lot of email clients now did as a countermeasure is they warned the user if the email is partly encrypted. Um, I think that's a bad idea because it delegates security decisions back to the user which, which I don't want. So what I would prefer is like having an all or nothing decryption. Email clients should not decrypt my email unless the whole um, message was encrypted within one single mime plot, one single element, okay? Yeah, 
Uh, also, we could, of course, think about other cryptographic countermeasures. Um, uh, one thing maybe regarding all or nothing encryption, it will break some, it will, may break some PGP inline emails. It will break definitely emails, some emails uh, composed by K-mail, which allows you to encrypt only the, the attachment and things like that. But it's a trade-off between, you know, compatibility and security. Okay, also we could think about cryptographic countermeasures, like why is it even possible to use the ciphertext from one email and years later use it in a completely different context in a completely different email? Modern online protocols, they would you have a binding of the ciphertext to the current communication session, right? Um, in he email, this, this still seems hard, hard to do. Okay, regarding signatures, uh, you may say let's drop simply support for CSS. I'm on your side, yeah? Um, I think, uh, unfortunately, a lot of, like, a lot of people want to have fancy formatting and, and they, they, which is done by CSS, so, so it may not be realistic for, for many email clients, so. Um, but email client vendors um, and, and, and implementers, what they can at least do is only reply with ASCII text or remove CSS styles from replies so they cannot be misused as uh, signing oracles anymore. Okay, <clears throat> so um, let me come to a conclusion. Um, so crypto is great, okay? But sometimes super simple bypasses exist. Sometimes we do not have to break the mass um, and in, in this uh, example these bypasses existed for, for decades, okay? And the vast majority of the tested clients are vulnerable to either being misused as decryption oracles or, or signing oracles or both. Um, and, and PGP and SMAP, they are more or less equally affected, okay, because we do not target the underlying cryptography. We target standard email features. So um, this brings me to the final question. Is it even possible to build security on top of email? I think this is very, very challenging, okay? And this talk is just one of many examples um, where things fail. Okay, so... Um, we reported um, all those issues to affected vendors in, uh, until February, and uh, most of the uh, decryption oracle issues are fixed now. Uh, the signing er issues are not fixed. Um, anyway, we're going full disclosure now, so if you want to test if your client is still vulnerable, um, you can use the test cases on, on GitHub. Okay, thank you guys, and enjoy this great conference. <laughs>